And besides which, we all know that she died years ago and it was replaced with a clone named Melissa. So who even is Avril Lavigne? What's up everybody, I'm Finn McKenty. This is the Punk Rock NBA. And you know what's a joke to me? People who gatekeep food. Bro, that's not real pizza. If you want real pizza, you gotta go to New York. Okay, but I like this. Am I allowed to enjoy this apparently fake pizza? Is that okay with you? But speaking of pizza, you know what's not a joke to me? Pop Punk. Welcome to Pop Punk Pizza Hut. My name is Peter. I'll be taking care of you tonight. And as the internet's leading authority on Pop Punk, I'm here to settle the debate once and for all. Who are the big four of Pop Punk? Do we go with the founding fathers like the Buzzcocks and Ramones or maybe the descendants? The 90s bands like Screeching Weasel and No Effects? The mall punks like Blink and New Found Glory? Or maybe the soft grunge sad boys of the Tumblr era when every pop punk girl had that expire beanie? Well, these are all potentially valid answers, but only one of them is the right answer. And I will explain why in this video. But first, I wanna thank Glary for sponsoring this video. Glary is one of the world's leading online stores for budget-friendly guitars and other musical instruments. As a beginner guitar brand, Glary found its niche with guitar lovers with a balance of good performance and affordable prices. They've got an affordable and reliable selection of electric guitars, bass guitars, acoustic guitars, and accessories. It's all very reasonably priced stuff that just about anybody can afford. And for beginners and music lovers who want even deeper discounts on guitars, I suggest checking out Glary's Cyber Monday special. Nothing sounds sweeter than this deal. This GST electric guitar features a C contoured maple neck, 22 fret maple fingerboard, single, single, single pickup, a five switch control layout, and a six string tremolo bridge. With prices beginning at amazingly only $75.99. So if you want to check out Glary and their Cyber Monday deal, just hit the link in the description and enjoy. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Here's what your favorite pop punk band says about you. You are a skater that didn't learn any tricks. First of all, for anybody who may not be familiar with the term, the big four, that's a reference to the 80s thrash scene when it was Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, and Slayer, who they called the big four of thrash. As the bands who kind of put it on the map when that genre was at its peak in terms of relevance. And so the question in this video is, who are their pop punk equivalents? And also who's the Dave Mustaine of pop punk? Although actually I'm not sure I want to know the answer to that. I kind of found out on the road how Dave was. <laughs> so first of all, obviously the biggest of the big four is Metallica. And who is the Metallica of pop punk? Well, first, let's think about what that means. They were obviously the most commercially successful band of the bunch by a mile. The gateway for literally millions and millions of people to get into metal back in the day and probably still now, actually. Which honestly is still weird to me because I remember when the Black Album came out and you would see like football players and their, you know, normie girlfriends come to school wearing new Metallica shirts, which completely blew my mind because before that, the only kids I knew that wore Metallica shirts were the ones that had that like James Hetfield in 1983, long feathered hair with the bangs that no matter what makes your IQ look like it's one and a half standard deviations below average. But anyway, the question here is who is the Metallica of pop punk? Well, the first candidate that comes to mind is Green Day, because just like Metallica was that gateway for normies to get into the shit, Green Day was the same thing. They were the ones that, for better or worse, brought football players and their normie girlfriends into the scene. And like Metallica, they also had roots in the underground DIY scene. Metallica came up in like the tape treating scene of the 80s. Green Day came up in like the Bay Area Gilman Lookout Records scene of the late 80s and early 90s. And I'm pretty sure that Green Day is the most commercially successful band to ever come out of the punk scene and very likely also the most influential, just like Metallica. You had a classic rock phase before evolving into your scene phase. But all of that being said, I'm gonna make a controversial call here and say that they're actually not part of the big four of pop punk because of their age. Because when I think of pop punk, I think of like the late 90s, early 2000s, American Pie, TRL kind of era, and Green Day were just not part of that. And in fact, I'm pretty sure that they hated all that stuff with a burning passion. Like imagine Green Day playing during MTV's like spring break bikini contest or putting a porn star on the cover of one of their albums or having a song full of like dick and fart jokes. That's just not Green Day. You gotta be fucking kidding me. So when it comes to the Metallica of pop punk, 
the big dogs of the whole genre who sit up on that throne head and shoulders above everybody else, it's got to be Blink-182. They may not be quite as massive as Green Day. As far as I know, there's no Blink-182 Broadway play, for example, but they're still pretty fucking big. I'd say almost as influential as Green Day. But more importantly, they're the defining band of what is clearly the golden era of pop punk, that 90s, 2000s, TRL, American Pie era. Let's just consider the facts. Mark and I definitely have more in common on uh, the whole poo poo pee pee thing than anybody else in this world. Dick jokes? Check. Normie jock fans? Check. Gelled up hair? Check. Dicky shorts with high socks, check and check. My friends, the facts don't lie. What it comes down to is that Green Day is a great band, but I think they were a punk band that played poppy music, whereas Blink was a pop band that played punky music. Because to me, that's really what the TRL era of pop punk was all about. Hey, I just saw Britney. She's wearing sunglasses inside right now. And that brings us to the next part, the Megadeth of pop punk. Metallica's irritating, unlikable, and yet surprisingly popular younger brother, who also happens to be a ginger. I'm not sure that Megadeth has any like super direct equivalent in pop punk, because I can't really think of any pop punk bands that have an especially annoying frontman. Maybe no effects, Fat Mike can be pretty annoying, but at the same time, I also kind of love him. So really what we're talking about here is who gets that number two slot in pop punk. One option that people mentioned, which I find interesting, is Avril Lavigne. He was a punk, she did ballet. Because I think it's only like fairly recently that she was retconned as being part of pop punk. I think she has some great songs, but she definitely wasn't seen that way at the time. And I don't even think she saw herself that way. Like I remember in interviews, she would say that her favorite artist was Shania Twain. And if you actually listen to a lot of her songs, a lot of them sound more like that than they do pop punk. And besides which, we all know that she died years ago and it was replaced with a clone named Melissa. So who even is Avril Lavigne? Avril Lavigne is dead. Yes. And has been dead Long since time. 2003. Yeah. And she was replaced by an actress named Melissa Vandella. Yes. And Melissa has just been living as Avril Lavigne since her album Under My Skin. Yeah. That said, I do hear a lot of girls credit her as being their on-ramp into alternative music. She has some great songs and seems like a cool person, but I do think we can give her the number one spot for 2000s pop punk girl fashion, which I expect TikTok e-girls to revive any day now if they haven't already. Come to think of it, actually, they probably almost definitely have. I love Avril Lavigne. I, I only love her. A few people also brought up the offspring here as an option, and they certainly have the commercial success. They sold something like 30 million albums, but there's two problems here. Number one, like Green Day, they just belong to a different older era. And number two, I'm sorry, they seem like really cool guys, but the band is absolutely awful. Easily the single corniest band in all of punk. They should be brought in front of a UN war crimes tribunal for putting out Pretty Fly for a white guy. They're like the Macklemore of punk. And all the girls say I'm pretty fly. Oh, Fall Out Boy is another one that came up. But again, I think that's part of a different era and a different subgenre. I would say they're the Metallica of mid 2000s mall emo, but that's kind of a different thing than what we're talking about here. And yes, I am splitting hairs here about 2000s mall alternative culture, but that's what I'm here for, right? Like all the memes that kids would post on MySpace where they were deeply offended about being called emo instead of seen or vice versa. I am so not seen. I'm emo. How could you not know this, mom? But actually, you know the real reason why Fall Out Boy can't be on this list? Because you will not find a single instance of them wearing dicky shorts with high socks. And I'm sorry, but you just can't be part of the big four of pop punk without that. So I'm actually going to give this slot to another band, Sum 41. They pretty much got zero respect when they came out. They were just seen as like a shitty blank ripoff. So it's interesting to see how much currency Sum 41 has now. I hear from a lot of people in my comments who absolutely love this band. And for good reason, because in hindsight, they're actually way more than just a blank ripoff. Their first big single, Fat Lip, is a really cool creative song that definitely brought something new to that 2000s pop punk sound. And I think even now, nobody's really done anything like that. Their next single, In Too Deep, is just a great classic pop punk song.
And from there, they evolved into their own sound that I think was a little bit more like metallic. They stuck around, kept touring, kept making music that wasn't just an attempt at recapturing what they did at the beginning of their career and earned themselves that really loyal core group of fans that I think is probably going to stick with them for as long as they want to keep playing. So for that reason, I think they deserve the number two slot here. But more importantly, they've got lots and lots of dicky shorts with high socks. And for bonus points, a good dose of gelled up spiky hair. Which brings us to the next part. Who is the slayer of pop punk? Slayer! Ah! I think of Slayer as the most like pure example of thrash metal of the big four. And so the question is, who is the most pure example of pop punk that also fits into the number three slot as far as popularity goes? This was the toughest part of the video for me. And I think it comes down to one of two bands, either Good Charlotte or Simple Plan. But before I get to those two bands, let me talk about who's not in this slot and why. A few people brought up MXPX, a great band, but really just not big enough to make it into the big four. A few people also mentioned bands like Weezer, All American Rejects, and Bowling for Soup. Again, great bands with lots of commercial success, but I would call them more power pop than pop punk. More from the rock family tree than the punk family tree. And you know how you can tell that I'm right? No dickies and no high socks. Although it would be kind of amazing to see Weezer in dickies shorts with famous stars and strap shirts and trucker hats like it's 2003. And speaking of which, the good news is that both Simple Plan and Good Charlotte more than check that box. No shortage of dickies and high shorts on either one of those bands. Plus, both of them get bonus points for doing the sweatband on the forearm thing. So on the one hand, we have Simple Plan, essentially the Canadian version of Blink. And you know how Canadian Canadians are, they're just so nice. And we are asking Canadians to trash talk the Golden State Warriors. Are you ready? Trash talk! I would not do that against anybody. Canadians don't do that. Canadians just can't be edgy no matter how hard they try. You're losing tonight. You're losing. That's it. That's my trash talk. Like how Drake tries so hard to be a bad boy, but nobody's buying it. They're like, oh, Aubrey, you're such a softie. We know you'd never do that. That's kind of how I see Simple Plan. Their big song was, I'm just a kid. Which is a great song, but I always kind of interpreted that as being like literally for kids, not teenagers or young adults like Blink or Sum 41, but actual children. Like I can totally imagine that song being the background music in some like Disney Channel movie about a kid who's scared to go to his first day of second grade. And they're playing the chorus as he's sitting there on the sidelines watching the other kids play kickball or whatever, desperately wishing that he was in there with them, but he's just too shy to say anything. Remember they did do the theme song for Scooby-Doo. Wow, our very own Simple Plan concert. And to be clear, none of that is a bad thing at all. They have great songs and they seem like good guys, but I think they're just a little bit too family friendly to really go into the big four of pop punk. Which means that this slot goes to Good Charlotte. I love how they were like a boy band where each one of them had like a persona. There was the street punk guy, the hardcore guy, the gothy new metal guy. I'd be curious to know how much of that was like deliberate on their part. I'm pretty sure it was because the Madden brothers are smart and I'm pretty sure they think about stuff like that. And some of the try hard tough guy stuff they did kind of makes me cringe a little bit. Yeah. Uh. But that said, you can't deny the power of their catalog. It is just full of pop punk bangers. You can say what you want, but the Madden Brothers are really fucking good songwriters. And yes, they actually did write those songs and also smart guys. They manage a bunch of newer producers and artists like water parks, for example. So they're still actively influencing the scene. And do they have Dickies shorts with high socks? Yes and yes. You peaked in high school and now you work at a video store. And lastly, who is the anthrax of pop punk? Well, this one is actually pretty easy for me. Anthrax is easily the least popular band of the big four. I mean, they've done well for themselves, but nothing like the other bands. But they were disproportionately influential, at least to me and the people that I knew. Specifically that they got a lot of people my age into hardcore. Scott Ian would always talk about like New York hardcore. They put the NYHC logo on some record, which upset people because they weren't technically like a hardcore band. They covered Discharge. Their old bassist, Dan Lilliker, was in Brutal Truth, et cetera, et cetera. 
And so the natural comparison there is New Found Glory. Not quite as popular as the other three bands, but still pretty fucking big. Remember, they did hit the Billboard Top 10. They were all over TRL. They had Rachel Lee Cook in a video, who was a big star at the time. And every single hardcore guy, including me, had a giant crush on her. Speaking of which, whatever happened to her? Hopefully she didn't have some sort of like tragic drug meltdown like 70% of those 2000 celebrities seem to have. You're a piece of shit. You are such a fucking piece of shit. But I'll find out when I do some research for my pop punk in 2000s teen movies video, which is coming soon. But aside from giving Rachel Lee Cook more screen time, which I was very grateful for, I would say that their big contribution is being the gateway for pop punk kids to get into hardcore. Primarily through Chad Gilbert, I think, who, as people will point out in the comments every single time I bring up Newfound Glory. And he would always wear like Mad Ball or Vietnam shirts and stuff. They did like a joke side project called International Superheroes of Hardcore. I believe the straight edge is the only way. Are you drinking me? And he had another project called Hazen Street with Freddie Madball. And all of that got a lot of pop punk kids to pay attention to and get into hardcore. Like imagine you had the superpower to look into somebody's soul and know their whole life story. Like if you played Pillars of Eternity, I bet you that if you used that superpower on all the tough guys that thought they were super cool for crowd killing high school kids and starting some cringy local crew, you'd probably find that over half of them got into hardcore because they heard about this thing called the breakdown through newfound glory. And actually, out of all the bands on this list, I would say that Newfound Glory is arguably the most consistent. They've never put out a bad record. There's some that I like more than others, but everything in their catalog is solid. So I think you gotta give them some credit for that. But of course, the real question is, do they pass the Dickies and High Socks test? And the answer is, yes, they do. So there you go. That is my big four of pop punk. So let me know what you think in the comments. And before I let you go, two things. Number one, if you haven't checked out the Punk Rock NBA podcast yet, you can do that at the link in the description. There's a new episode every week. I've got some amazing guests coming up over the next couple months. So don't miss that. And also, I would like to thank everybody who supports us on Patreon, especially those of you who support at the true cult level or above. It blows my mind that there's so many people who are so generous on Patreon, and I appreciate it very much. It's because of you guys that were able to do the podcast. That's how I pay our producer and editor, Deanna, who makes the whole thing happen. She's amazing. So thank you very much. If you would like to support us on Patreon, there's a link to that in the description. And with that, I'm going to sign off for now, but I will see you next time.